Welcome to this video about SharePoint Online. We're going to be talking about why organizations choose to use SharePoint Online to collaborate, organize, and manage documents efficiently. My name's Dougie Wood, and I'm a Microsoft MVP. I run a YouTube channel which talks all about the best practices and use cases of using SharePoint Online. In this video, I'm going to be talking about the core features and functionality of SharePoint Online, as well as why companies use SharePoint Online and also how you can get started using some of these features and give you an idea of why you should be using SharePoint Online. The first thing to talk about is document management. Now, this is fundamentally what SharePoint is known for and essentially is its party trick. SharePoint Online provides a robust document management system that lets users easily create, edit, store, and collaborate on documents, streamlining workflows and improving productivity. So let's take a quick look. This is what a typical document library would look like inside of SharePoint Online. You can see a list of all the different documents I have stored in here, and you can see it has all the different Office products available, including PowerPoint, Word, Excel, OneNote, and you can also store other types of documents in here as well. You can create new documents simply by clicking on the new uh, button across the top, click on Word, and that will create a brand new Word document. Same goes with all the others. We can also choose to add in links. So just say, for example, if you wanted to store a link to a third party website, say, for example, if this was related to a project that we're putting together, maybe there's some suppliers that we're going to be working with. We could link the supplier's website next to the documents that we're storing inside of this document library. We can also organize our document library further by adding folders. By clicking new and then folder, we can then type in, for example, a, a name of a folder. We can even give it color coordination as well if we wanted to. And we can also add subfolders underneath this folder. So again, I can give it a different color and then I create my subfolder. I can see where I am in, in the overarching folder structure by using this navigation across the top. And I can also use it to navigate my way back up by clicking through those different options. I can also choose to upload documents or even drag and drop documents from File Explorer directly into this document library. I can see who was the last person to modify documents um, as well as when they were last modified. I can also see the version numbers. So I can add version numbers into my document libraries to see where um, the kind of versions are up to. Now this is definitely important to use for things like policies, procedures, things like that, to know that you're actually looking at the latest version of a document. We can also do things like integrating Power Automate to have workflow reminders, things like when documents are going to expire, review dates, or when you publish a document, you might want to get approval from somebody. And you can do this by integrating Power Automate to the document library. Now, it's not just about document management, though. So document management is obviously a key part of SharePoint, um, but also we We'll want to look at things like the collaborational features of SharePoint. So SharePoint Online enables teams to collaborate effectively with features like team sites. So there's two different types of SharePoint sites. We've got communication sites and we've got team sites. Communication sites are for publishing information to the wider organization and team sites are for collaboration. I do have another deep dive video about this topic if you look at my channel for SharePoint communication sites versus team sites. Also, we have the ability to have co-authoring, which is where multiple people can edit the same document at the same time. In live time, you can see people typing into the document. Also, we can integrate with other Microsoft products like Microsoft Teams and other Office 365 apps. The cool thing I like about um, the features inside of SharePoint is not just about co-authoring, so multiple people editing the same document at the same time, but also we have what we call version history, which allows us to see what changes have been made in a document um, and by who. And even if I go back here, go back in time into the document and I can restore it from a previous point in time. Now, this is a key feature of SharePoint, which you can't necessarily do with other kind of solutions. You can go back and restore it from a previous point in time and it will keep all of those previous versions. So I can choose to restore it and it will keep the original version of the document, but restore it back to the content from this previous date in time. Another core feature of SharePoint and why people choose it is how easy it is to customize. So SharePoint Online provides a range of customization options, including custom branding, workflows and forms. So you can customize the look and feel, so the colors, the themes, the logos, the imagery. 
We can also customize workflows. So as I say, we can integrate Power Automate to build out custom bespoke workflows, as well as creating forms. So maybe you wanted to have like an incident management form or an asset management list. Now, these are all things you can do with SharePoint and have custom forms to import that data. This all helps the organization to tailor the platform to meet their specific needs and make it feel part of your working day-to-day -day practices. SharePoint is not just about document management. It's also about storing other types of data. And this is what we refer to as lists. So creating custom lists allows us with SharePoint to have um, custom lists to manage and organize data, simplifying the process of data management and retrieval. Custom lists, are, custom lists are flexible and can be tailored to specific organization needs. You can also use bespoke, um, sorry, templated um, examples of lists directly from Microsoft. And it's really simple to deploy. So let's have a quick look. So from our SharePoint site, if we click on new and then list, we can see all the different templates that Microsoft offer to us. Things like the asset manager um, or employee onboarding, issue tracking. So we can select a template or we can even upload uh, an Excel spreadsheet or CSV to start off our list so we can import the data. It'll import not only the data, but also the columns as well that we want to use. But in this case, I'm just going to have my issue tracker. It's going to show me what this will look like and the columns that the template is using. Then I click on use template, click on create, and this will then create me this issue tracker list and it's created all the columns. It won't create the, the fake dummy data for you, but you can easily add data by either clicking on add new item and then we can type in our issue, description, priority, things like that into here. Or we can click on edit grid view and treat it like it's a spreadsheet where we can manually type in. Um, all the different data in into this or even copy and paste it if we had some of the data in Excel spreadsheet we can paste it directly into these cells as well we can choose to customize by clicking on add column and we can add in our own different fields in here so different types of things like text but also tagging things like people or uh, hyperlinks or adding images against the records that we have inside of this list as well we can also have things called views. So for example, we can see here issues grouped by person, issues grouped by priority, or issues grouped by status. So we can use views to group items in a list, but we can also use them to sort or filter items in or out of the view as well. So that's SharePoint lists. As I say, we can add columns and this allows us to customize those SharePoint lists and organizations can provide more detail and relevant information against the list items, making it easier to filter, view, and sort data. Columns can be customized to reflect specific data types, such as dates, numbers, or text. Or as we saw, we could tag people or add imagery against those list items as well. We can also use views, which are SharePoint views are customizable and allow organizations to filter and display data in a way that suits their needs. By creating and using views, organizations can quickly and easily access the data that is most important to them. And on the theme of customization, um, it's not just about customizing lists. So we've talked about customizing lists, but you can also use those same functionalities to customize libraries. Custom libraries in SharePoint Online allows organizations to create libraries that are tailored to their needs, making it easier to manage and share documents and files within the organization. Um, so those same columns that we looked at before, we can add them to our documents. So you can have things like a policy library where you're tagging against it who the policy owner is. You could tag against it when the review date of that policy or the expiry date of that policy using those columns. But also we can customize SharePoint further. As I say, we can customize the branding in SharePoint Online. This allows organizations to create a customized look and feel for their SharePoint Online sites, ensuring that they are consistent with organizations' branding and identity. So you can make it feel like it's your own. You can customize the colors, uh, the logos, the imagery that is used throughout your intranet. So let's take a quick look at that. So from your SharePoint site, if you click on the cog, and then click on change the look. You can see we've got a few options here. We can change the theme. So say for example, if we wanted to use the default colors, we could select a red template or a green template. Now, 
it takes a little bit more work, but you can also create your own bespoke color theme palettes. Now I do have a video, so if you're quite technical, you can go and look at the color theme uh, creator video on my YouTube channel. Or if you need a little bit of help and support, we also offer professional services and we can help customize your SharePoint for you so you can reach out using the contact link uh, in the description below. But you can see we can have some custom layouts, uh, custom themes as well. Um, so I've gone with this kind of black and gray color. Um, you can also change the look in terms of the header, making it larger or smaller or more compact. You can change the theme colors of the header as well as changing the logo as well. So my internet is called The Heart. And I really like this red logo against the black background, but you could also choose to put your company logo in there as well. Some organizations even have different logos depending on the different SharePoint sites as well. So they might have the same company logo, but the different branches, different arms, different departments or business units might use slightly different colored logos just to so show a bit of difference between the different SharePoint sites as you move around. You can also choose to customize um, the navigation bar, so having different types of drop downs, as well as the footer area, whether you want a big, small, different colors, um, and different logos as well that you can apply to the footer. I hope you're enjoying this video, and if you are, please like the video and subscribe to my channel. Also, you might be interested in my membership, which is only 99 pence per month, and it will get you exclusive access to a full SharePoint training fundamentals course, as well as um, uh, some videos on how to build SharePoint intranets and priority access to any questions uh, that you might want to add, ask, you will get priority responses from myself inside the membership tab as well. And if you need any professional services or support, you can use a contact link inside the bio on my channel and you can get in contact with me um, and we can discuss your SharePoint requirements. So why are companies using SharePoint online? So We've talked a bit about um, some of these kind of core features already, but just to loop back round to one of the fundamental elements of SharePoint is that it's a centralized platform. SharePoint Online provides a centralized platform for organizations to store, organize, and manage content, making it easy for employees to find what they need and collaborate with others. So we've looked at things like having um, documents stored in SharePoint, but we'll also treat it like a intranet in terms of it being an internal website where we can get not only documents, but news, links to things like career information, benefits, company vision and values, news items, events, um, Q&As, FAQs, and quick links to help people navigate their working life. We've talked about teamwork capabilities. SharePoint Online offers a range of teamwork capabilities, such as document sharing, co-authoring, and real-time collaboration, which helps teams work more efficiently and effectively. So not only have we got things like the version control and things like that in our documents and the version histories, we've got that co-authoring so we can collaborate and we can work on documents together, even sharing documents externally to other parties outside of the organization if we wanted to. We can lock that down as well. In fact, it's locked down by default. And that brings us on to talk about the security features. SharePoint Online provides robust security features such as, such as user permissions and access controls to ensure that sensitive information is protected and only accessible by authorized employees. Now this is done using what we call SharePoint permissions. SharePoint permissions can easily be accessed by clicking on the cog across the top and then clicking on site permissions. Now there's three different areas of SharePoint permissions, but to keep this simple, I'm only going to talk about the very top and the very bottom. So we have what we call site owners, which is basically anyone who has full control of the site um, and can do anything, create things, add things, update things, delete things, what have you. And then we have site visitors, which have um, what we call no control. They have read-only access. They can only go there to consume documents, um, read policies, open documents, things like that. Um, so you can define them really easily and you can share them via an email address to somebody to say, okay, I'm going to add in Joe Blogs into here and we can click on share site, I'll type in that person's name. So I'm going to add in Chris, for example, tell him what level of access he has, full control or read only, then click on add and that will then add them to that relevant group. I do have a another video which is all about SharePoint permissions which goes into a lot more detail so go and check that out after this if you need more advice about SharePoint permissions.
Another very common um, feature or, or unique selling point of SharePoint is the ability to use it for navigating documents, files, and folders. So we can use SharePoint to access sites, libraries, and lists. SharePoint Online allows you to easily navigate and access these sites, libraries, and lists. You can use the left navigation pane on the, on the site contents or the navigation bar across the top to locate and open the desired content. So you can see here on this site, we have these navigation links across the top, which is known as a hub navigation bar, which is consistent throughout all the different sites on our SharePoint. Then we have what we call our site navigation bar, which is specific to the current site we're looking at. And this might link to key information like career information, benefits, culture, the asset management tool, the issue tracker, things like that, that people want to be able to access quickly. But we also have the benefit of using a search feature inside of SharePoint. So SharePoint Online includes a powerful search feature that allows you to quickly find content within a site or across multiple sites. You can refine your search results by using filters and sorting options. So from my SharePoint intranet, say I'm looking for a certain um, document, um, you can see it's already starting to filter things not only by the files, but also the news items and SharePoint sites I have access to. So I'm going to look for a document called How We Work, and I know it's a PowerPoint. So there we go. There's our document. But I could have found this by using the file type, PowerPoint, apply, and then finding that document. I could also choose to apply other filters. So I know it was modified in the last, say, three months, and I could filter it down in that way. I could also filter by not only um, files, but also SharePoint sites, which might be relevant, news items that might be relevant, and images that might be relevant. So this SharePoint search function is really, really powerful. It's gonna find content, files, pages, but it's not just gonna find it based on the title, it's also gonna find it based on the content within um, the, the page or the document itself. So you can see here on this particular SharePoint site, we've got the, the phrase here, how we, and it's picked that up and thinks it might be part of the how we work keyword that I've put in here, and it's brought that back as part of the search results. I hope you found that video useful. If you did, um, please make sure you like the video, subscribe to my channel for more SharePoint top, top tips. Um, you can also get in touch. So if you need any help or professional services related to SharePoint, there's a link in the description below. Get in touch with me and we can talk about how we can support your SharePoint journey. Thank you.